Yeah. Okay, law of cosines. So the law of cosines will solve the one issue that we've run into so far, and that is what happens when you have a non-right triangle that doesn't have that relationship of the side opposite the angle. Okay, so remember, going back to, uh, when did I see it last, Thursday? Going back to Thursday, when we're using law of sines, in order to use law of sines, we have to have that relationship of an angle and the side opposite it. We need that ratio. If you don't, then you switch to law of cosines. This is a little bit harder to solve. Well, okay, there's two parts to it. One of them is ridiculously easy. The other one is a little bit more challenging. So we're gonna we're gonna go slow here and uh, and take baby steps in order to use the law of sines. Okay. Or law of cosines, I should say. Okay, so if you look at a triangle down in the bottom, triangle, aardvark, badger, cat, you'll see that I don't know how long the side A is. Since I don't know. Good. Okay. Since we don't know how long A is, it doesn't meet the requirements for, for, for law of sines. I would suggest that when you attack these problems, when we get towards the end of the chapter and you've got all of these different problems together, I would first ask yourself, self, is this a right triangle? If the answer is no, then you know you're either going to do law of sines and law of cosines. You will quickly realize that law of sines is a lot easier. So then question number two should be, can I use law of sines? If the answer is yes, then do it. If the answer is no, then don't, and you have to use the law of cosines. If you understand what you're doing, you should only ever have to do the law of science calculation once. Okay? Can you do it twice? Yes, but it's silly. Don't do that. Okay? Again, work smarter, not harder. Questions so far? So again, talking about this idea of understanding what you're doing instead of just plugging and chugging blindly, you want to approach the problems like this. This is not a right triangle. Kind of looks like a right triangle, but we don't know that it is. I don't know the measure of side A, so therefore I don't have the angle and the side opposite it. So that means I have to use the law of cosines. This is the law of cosines. Go ahead and write that down. Hold, please. Okay, so this looks great, but what happens if my triangle is labeled x, y, z? Can I not use the law of cosines? Yes, you can. So here's a couple things to notice. Over on the left-hand side of this equation, I've got lowercase a. The angle that I'm dealing with is the same as the left-hand side of the equation. Okay, that relationship has to always be there. Whatever side is on the left, you want the same angle over on the right. Stand up, sit down, five, five, five. The letters are completely irrelevant. So if I rewrite this just for giggles, let's suppose I've got triangle, um, I don't know, whoops, go back. Let's suppose I've got triangle X, Y, Z and I want to use the law of cosines. I could do something like X squared is equal to Y squared plus Z squared minus brackets. Those brackets are very important. Two times, notice this letter matches that, this letter matches that. Whoops, got a little anxious there. Y times Z times the cosine of X. Okay. Again, this letter has to match that letter. Everything else is just plug and chug. Okie doke. Pose. Next screen. All right. Please. How far do you want me to go back? Could you go back as far? Oh, sure. There are two types of law of cosines. <laughs> problems that we're going to do. The first one is called the side angle side scenario. It's called the side angle side scenario because you know a side, you know an angle, and you know a side. 
This is the easy one. The reason this is the easy one, because it's literally just a plug and chuck. How long is B in this problem? Somebody said it. Four. How long is C? Seven. How, long, how big is angle A? 52. OK, now the reason this one is so easy is because it's just a plug and chug. Set up your equation, and you're literally going to type in the whole right-hand side of the equation all at once in your calculator and get an answer. Go, do that. Hold on, before you start doing that, let me ask you a question. What can you tell me about the size of side A? It's smaller than seven. We would think, based on the picture, that it would be smaller than seven. Thank you, carry on. Angle, or the side A, you should probably get a size less than seven. Just use parentheses. Remember, you're solving for a squared in this case. Okay, so if you got 30.5229738, you're on the right track. The last step, however, is that's what a squared is equal to. So you got to take the square root to get 5.525. Okay, there's your setup. Hold on. Now, this is the easy one because you can just plug that entire thing into your into your calculator. However, be careful with parentheses. Do you need the parentheses around the four and the seven? No, you just do times. Two times four times seven times. The calculator will put a set of parentheses before the 52. You need to close that and then close it again. And when you do that, like I said, you get 30.523, but then you need to take the square root because notice that's a squared. Okay, done. Now, would I do step two? No, I would literally go from step one to set up and then just do all the work on my calculator and get A. Jack's home. Uh, I should have done three decimal places. I got lazy, I'm sorry. What? I would guess it's a parentheses mistake. Hold on, Leah, let me finish this. Okay, for confusion here, if uh, as far as parentheses go, 
you would need this one there. You'd put that one in. You don't need that. You don't need that. You don't need that. You don't need that. It would put that one in. Close, close. Oh, so you wouldn't have to do that. No. Yeah. Leo, what's your question? So are you times seven by the Yep. That's all multiplication. Okay. So what I found was this is about 5.5. We're going to go one decimal place just for discussion purposes. All of a sudden, by doing that one little law of cosines, now I have that relationship that I need for law of sines. I have an angle, angle A, and the side A. Okay? And I would then switch to law of sines. I don't want to do law of cosines more than once because it scares me. So I would go and say the sine of 52 over 5.5, stored value, not approximate value, is equal to the sine of C over 7. You know how to solve that. We did that the other day, so I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to move on and solve cosines. Okay. Does it make sense? As many of you know, I'm not a big fan of memorization. So on the quizzes, from this point on, I will give you the law of cosines. You don't have to memorize it. That's not what I'm concerned about. My concern is application. Are we good? Okay, let's look at the other scenario. The other scenario is more challenging because there's some rules to follow. It is a side, side, side scenario. Three sides of a triangle. Okay, before we dive into this, which, uh, not side, come on, Reed, you can do this. Which angle is biggest? Don't trust the picture, trust the numbers. O, correct. Which angle is the middle angle? G as in gopher. That makes D the smallest angle. When you're done with the problem, again, kick in that small, medium, large theorem and see, do your numbers work out? Okay. Now, there, there's one small thing that you need to remember with the side, side, side scenario. I'm not going to explain to you why this happens. You'll learn about it in pre-calc. But what you need to remember is that you always, without exceptions, go from the largest angle to the smallest angle. So in your notes, put that in a colorful cloud, put some stars around it, have some arrows point at it, highlight it, do whatever you need to do to remember that you solve for the largest angle first in the side, side, side scenario. And again, you're just going to have to trust me why that's the case. It would take too long to explain it to you. And then I would take away from the joy that the pre-calc teachers have in explaining why that's the case. OK, step number one, setting up the problem before we solve it. So go to the law of cosines, set up the equation first, make sure you have all the sides in the right location. We'll check that together, then we'll work on solving it. Okay, so set it up first, go ahead. talk while you're setting it up. Remember we're solving for angle O. So angle O is going to be all the way over on the right. Side O has to be all the way over on the other side, on the left hand side. So your equation should start with 19.7 squared equals and then go crazy from there. Okay, got it set up correctly? It should be 17, or sorry, 19.7 squared equals 12.1 squared plus 8.8 .8 squared minus parentheses 2 times 12.1 times 8.8 .8 times the cosine of angle O. No. 
Nope. 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 So we should have that. So Juliana just asked a question. Do these two things matter? No, this could be 8.8 .8 and that could be because 1 plus 2 is the same thing as 2 plus 1. Okay. And if you, if you want to get fancies in your pansies, you could even switch these and leave those alone. 1 times 2, same thing as 2 times 1. Okay, so we're good. I'm going to show you the most common mistake that people make solving this problem. However, I'm going to show you using a different problem without all the decimals and stuff. Let's suppose I have this set up to look something like this. Uh, let's say uh, 12 squared equals 7 squared plus 8 squared minus brackets 2 times 7 times 8 times the cosine of angle uh, P. Okay, so there's your setup. This is an imaginary problem. I want to show you the mistake that people make so that you don't make this mistake. So here's what people do. They say 144 is equal to 49 plus 64 minus 112 cosine of P. Okay, so far? Good. Then they say... 113 minus 12, 112 times the cosine of P equals 144. And then they subtract those two numbers. No, you can't do that. There's a reason why there's brackets there. Okay, that's bad math. So don't do that. Okay. How do you do it? I just said do do. <laughs> oh, I love my job. Ooh, I made a big jump. Where did that number come from? I'll show. Well, actually, you know what? You try it. See if you can isolate the cosine of O first and get negative 0.7712. Give it a shot. The worst that you do is get it wrong. It's okay. We still love you. Most of you, at least. Thirty more seconds. It's okay. Oh yeah. I'll tell you why. Yes. I'm going to talk while you're calculating. Many of you will not get negative point seven seven one two. That's okay because I'm going to talk you through it. But at, on a side note. Anytime you have an equation that says the cosine of some angle equals a number, that number has to be between negative 1 and 1. Okay? Which means that as I'm simplifying this equation, I should get cosine of 0 equal, equaling a number less than 1. How do I do that? I start with, uh, play along on your calculator, please. I would start with 19.7 and I'd square it. Get some number, it doesn't matter. Then I would subtract from it 12 point, 12 12.1 squared. Then I would subtract from it 8.8 .8 squared. So it ends up looking something like this on step one. I take all the numbers that aren't in parentheses and I schlep them over to the other side of the equation. We okay so far? I don't care what the number is because your calculator will tell you what the number is. Then what I would do is I would take these numbers 
and multiply them together to get one number. What is 2 times 12.1 times 8.8, .8, please? This is negative 212.96. Right, negative because I got a minus sign there. Okay, good. Times the cosine of O equals whatever this mess is. How do I get the cosine of O by itself? I divide that other side by this negative 212.96. Or 2 okay, this is a positive number which is fine, it could be negative, but it's positive. You take a positive divided by a negative, you get a negative number, which matches the negative 0.7712. Okay, Alex, let's come back to you. So you got this as an answer, right? Yes. Okay, bonus question for you. How do I get angle O by itself? Not the opposite, what's it called? Hold on. I'm in the middle of a question. Anybody else? Inverse. inverse, right. So you do the inverse of cosine and figure out the answer. Now, Jackson, you had a question. I got negative 0.7. Yeah, I'd say that's fine. Okay. Do an inverse cosine on both sides and figure out how big angle O is. What'd you get? Um, hold on. Yes, it should be a big number. I got the same thing. What? One forty point something or another. Point. Yeah. What'd you say? Four four. Four four four. four? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's angle O. Probably. I got thirty nine point five three six. You did something wrong then. Do you do an inverse cosine yes. or inverse sine? I did an inverse cosine. Inverse cosine of negative 0. 0.7712? Oh, negative. Negative. Yes. Yeah. So that's another interesting thing. Notice, minus signs become very important in trig. If you forget the minus sign, you get a completely different answer. Would you say 39 point something or another? Yeah, 39 point. Yeah. That's also why I keep hyping on you when you're done to see if small, medium, large still works. So if Ravi gets 39 point whatever, that could be okay until he continues solving for the other angles and then those angles are all of a sudden bigger than O. And we already know that O has to be the biggest angle in the triangle. This question. O should be 140.444. I isolated the cosine of O in that problem above. Oh, I got a I assume that's the right number. I haven't done that. So I just put it as X. I just Some of you will get frustrated with the side, side, side scenario. It's just going to take practice. The biggest thing that you can do, and I know you're tired of hearing this, but I don't care. Does your answer make sense? You will continue to get answers. You just won't know they're wrong until you start doing some analysis. Don't just blindly trust your calculator. When you're done, spend 30 seconds and see, does this make sense? Is O the biggest angle? O should be the biggest angle, G should be the medium angle, D should be the smallest angle. And again, I'm only going to do this calculation once. Because after this, I'm going to have the relationship of the sine and the angle opposite, or the angle and the side opposite, and switch the law of sines. What? Now, from this point forward, I would do law of sines. Not only am I going to do law of sines, I'm also going to find angle G next, not angle D. Okay. You have to follow that rule for the side, side, side scenario. The side angle, side scenario, you do whatever you want. Wait. Yes? Once we know that like, what angle O is, could we do side angle, side angle? 
Yes. You could use co law of cosines, but it's uglier. I would go to law of sines, but you could do whatever you want. Oh. Okay, so this is the point, you'll, you'll recall, when we were doing law of sines, I kept telling you to store numbers, to store numbers, to store numbers. Now, it's a requirement because in order to solve this problem, you have to use calculated information. In the stuff we did on Thursday, you can get by by using given information the whole problem. But in this particular case, once you know that angle O is 140.4, blah, 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 that has to be used for later calculations. In order to do that, you need to store that number to keep us as accurate as possible. Okay. So then switch to law of sines. That's what I did. I switched to law of sines to solve for angle G. I got about 23 degrees. How did I get angle D? I didn't show any work. Yep. Beautiful. Work smarter, not harder. And G and O. Yep. Because we know they all have one A. Add up to one A. Questions? This is not easy stuff. It's going to require some practice. It's also going to require that you spend some time analyzing problems and going through that self-talk that I gave you before. Do I have a right triangle? If the answer is yes, then just go back to sine, cosine, and tangent. Most of you have established the fact that you've mastered that and can rock a simple right triangle problem. Whenever you can, use a straightforward sine, cosine, tangent calculation. Now all of a sudden you get to a triangle that doesn't have a right angle. Next question I would ask myself is self, is there the relationship of an angle and the side opposite it? If there is, law of sine. If there isn't, then you're either law of, uh, then you're either law of cosines using side angle side, or you're law of cosines using side side side. And again, you should only have to do the law of cosines calculation once. Could you do it more than once? Yes. I just think it's too much of a pain in the butt. Don't do silly things like use Pythagorean theorem on a non-right triangle. For instance, if we go back to the first example, some of you might be tempted to say, oh yeah, yeah, I can find A, because A squared plus four squared equals seven squared. No, it's not a right triangle. Pythagorean theorem only applies to right triangles. Okay, we're all done. For those of you that care, I'm worried about the Bears and the end of the season. So I just thought I'd throw that up there after a bye week. Questions? We good? Excellent. Let's quiz. When you're done with the quiz, I'll unlock the day six homework. You can work on that. I want to do the final I've got one.